As most of us know, recording studios spend so much money on preamps, tens of thousands getting the best preamps, and they all seem to say that this preamp's better than that preamp. I wanna know why, and I wanna know why this is so cheap compared to those other preamps. What is the difference? I've recorded drums, percussion, with a track, without a track, I've gone into depth into what is the difference, and you're gonna hear what the difference is. I'm Alex Biggs, this is Drum Bass Studios, let's get into it. So I started off by using this Focusrite preamp. The one thing I would say, obviously this is cheap, so everyone thinks it's not gonna be that good, but if you have a little listen to the results, there is a difference, but to be honest with you, the last thing I wanna do is put anyone off getting anything like this. This is so cheap, so easy to use, I would highly recommend that you get something like this when you're starting out. And then you can progress up the ladder to better preamps. And this is the results you'll see with the recordings I've made. Now, weirdly, some instruments actually sound better through this than they do through some quality preamps. Again, what I found is that studios tend to pick the preamps because the engineers know that that preamp works so well with that sort of instrument, and that is a real good skill to have, and that's why you pay for your recording studios, not just the gear. Let's uh, have a little listen. So what I've done, in this door, you can see, I've recorded the drums first, so you'll hear the different drums. I play to a track as best I can. I've been playing well over 20 years, so to get it as accurate as I can, because it's not scientific, so I know that there's so many variables to get this right. It's just a rough idea, and it's just an interesting thing for me to look at, and because I wanted to really find out if it's worth spending money on preamps. So I've got a microphone, up there and that does not move. The only variant is my playing. And as I say, I've been playing for so long, I don't think that's gonna change what I play. The bongos, they've got two mics on the side. They're not gonna change. And again, my playing is pretty consistent on those. Now with the percussion, what I've done, I've grabbed a music stand and what I've done is placed it so that when I play the instrument, I don't go too near the mic or too far from the mic, because as you know, proximity effect will make it sound thinner or deeper or more fuller the closer you get and the further away it starts to thin out. So I've tried to get each take exactly the same. So that's how I've done it. It's just a bit of fun, it's really interesting. And as I say, watch right to the end because you'll see with a track and how it works and you can pick a favorite. So let's get into it. So as I say, on the door, what you've got is you've got three tracks or three stereos, two ins on each one, coming in and what I've done is I've just literally played the track three times, took ages because I did it three times on the drums, three times on every instrument for each preamp and I what I've done is I've tried to match the gain by turning them up or down uh, so that they're roughly the same. So I know the waveforms might look bigger or smaller, but I've actually adjusted it. So, because as you know, if something's louder, it sounds better. I've mastered it at the end as well. And I've used the Fusion as well, just to see what that is. So as I say, in the door, you can see what I've done. So let's push play and we'll go through. I've color coded them to so try and remember which one is which. You should be able to see. And then just have a real listen. Might be worth doing it with headphones if you can't hear it through your speakers. So if you look here, there's absolutely no EQ. And all that's happening is that I've sent this to drums and if we look at drums just got a bit of reverb on so that's the only thing that's on there so there's no EQ in any of the percussion so on here we've got all the percussion there's no EQ and it's just going to a percussion one and again the percussion one has got a little bit of reverb on. So I'm gonna record everything I, I play and then I'm gonna add later on the fusion in and out and then put ozone in and that should record it as I do it. So let's go for it.
So as you can see, really interesting how to work on preamps because not every preamp sounds amazing on every instrument. I think the cowbell and the bongos sort of had a different pitch, didn't they? It was just really weird. The other thing I think I've found out is that when people say you have air in the mix, again, how can you hear air? But when you listen to the SSL and a little bit of the O1V, that adds a little bit of air, that sort of space that you get um, when you record. And it's not, not in the focus, right? It's, it's lacking in that. The crack on the snare is good on that. So again, you know, it's very versatile. The other thing I've, I think I've realized is that you need different preamps for different instruments, as I said at the beginning. For someone to say, I always use this preamp, I don't think that's the right decision. So it's good to have a few, and that's why I've got these different preamps, just in case. If something's not working, it might not just be the mic. And then to add more into the mix, you've got what mic works best with what preamp, the Rode NT4. Now, this microphone, the reason I used it is because of the XY positioning of the mics. Now, what that means is that there's not going to be any phase or very little phase if I use two separate ones when I'm doing the percussion, if I get closer to one than the other. With this, it stays the same. So that's why I picked this mic. I was actually really impressed with how well the mic performed. It's not that expensive. It's about £500, $600. So it's not a bad um, price on the mic and I use it as a room but I think after going through this I might try a different way of miking up my drums because I thought just on those mics alone it sounded all right it was missing the bottom end I think I might even just use the SSL because I thought that shone on the drums do the bass the snare and the two uh, mics overheads i've got sm81s which i use uh sure sm81s as overheads and then i think for the room uh i'll use a um possibly a condenser microphone and i've watched a video where they put it right over the kit i might experiment with that who knows but um i'm gonna have a little try a little think because it definitely it does make a difference when you use different preamps and different miking techniques. And obviously the more mics you put in, the more hassle and the more difficult it is to mix. So having less mics could work. So if you want to use a drum kit on the SSL Big Six, you can get a half decent sound out of it. So uh, it's definitely worth looking into. Anyway, I'm Alex Biggs. This is Drum Bass Studios. I'll see you in the next one.